but as an epidemiologist our greater emphasis is on the measure of the response than on the measure of the exposure what do we do because we have to control the disease right so we have to look at how do we prevent the disease right so now why this is occurring mostly of late is why because we are more focusing on the response is because most of the epidemiologists currently who are trained basically as a physician and then they are trained as an uh, epidemiologist so always what we are trained as a basic as a physician that is there in our mind and we start working like so epidemiologists we tend towards measuring the outcome more than the exposure but actually what it is we have to do both measure the exposure and the outcome and try to prevent the disease this should be our main work what we are doing so what do the epidemiologists do what basically what are our roles and responsibilities what is the scope so the scope the first is all epidemiologists or epidemiology we try to describe and explain the disease occurrence to the community what is that disease what are the symptoms who is that getting affected how it is that getting affected we basically describe things and then try to find the cause i know for that that's how we start our work we are describing the disease in the community what is the occurrence of the disease it could be any disease for that and while doing that so government have to decide so let's say we have uh, recently we have seen that uh, the covid was there the pandemic we were so we had to prioritize all our resources had to go for preventing and controlling covid so it's the epidemiologist help in prioritizing or developing that program because we come get the evidence from our investigations so it's a evidence based practice evidence based policy decisions which so if epidemiologists assist in developing prioritizing and evaluating the public health programs so now let's once suppose we have decided that uh, we have to do program on uh, preventing covid or maybe reducing the uh, the infant mortality rate or something so we develop some programs if we have to reduce infant mortality rate we have developed some programs whether the programs are going in a right direction okay whether the programs are going in a right direction or as it is done so we evaluate the programs whether it is successful not successful if it is successful what is the reason why it was if it is not successful why it is not successful so like that we try to prioritize and evaluate the health problems we identify the risk factors what is the reason that the disease is occurring what are the risk factors uh, for example today we know that obesity is a risk factor for cardiovascular disease smoking is a risk factor hypertension is a risk factor how did we get to know all these things this all is because of the studies which have been done by various researchers and these are all the epidemiological studies like we have the major study uh, which is with, uh, in cardiovascular disease is the uh, framingham heart study from which we got most of our data what we have we talk about uh, disease and its risk factors are from this study it's a huge long cohort study which is happening for more than 45 years 70 years this is happening right another major work or the role what we do is investigating the disease outbreaks or epidemics it's it's not that only the epidemiologists do it's a team the epidemiologists have to lead this particular outbreak now suppose let's say that there was an um, outbreak of food poisoning or in a college hostel the suddenly people had food poisoning people having uh, diarrhea and vomiting and all and they get admitted to the hospital so the team of experts come in that epidemiologist is one they try to find out why did this episode occur what was it either what which food was contaminated and what is that contaminant you know whether it is any virus or a bacteria or, or something like that so we come with the team and investigate what is happening or the epidemics why uh, these kind of events are occurring then the another most important uh, activity an epidemiologist does is assist in health planning and health policy formulation that is today uh, whatever policies are done it is based on the 
research which has been done. Uh, for example, let's say uh, wearing helmet uh, reduces the death rate in the sense the injury rate to the head because wearing helmet but you when there is an accident usually people fall and they have a head injury and then they die so by wearing a helmet uh, if they fall the injury to the head is prevented by this the death rate is also reduced so where did we come we get all these things from our research what we do and that is going into the policy formation. So where we have the uh, rule now, you should not drive a two-wheeler or ride a two-wheeler without the helmet. So it's made mandatory. So these are all coming from the epidemiologists who are doing the kind of research and trying to do uh, the assessment. Okay. So another thing is what happens to the disease in the long run? Today we are having a disease, today we are able to control, but what if it just goes on like this? What's happening to the human being or to the animals, whatever? So they try to explain the natural history of the disease, the progress of the disease, what happens. And we also estimate the disease risks in the individual, which I've already discussed this already. So we complete the clinical picture of the disease. So completing the clinical picture of the disease is also uh, a role of an epidemiologist where he or she is trying to understand what is happening uh, clinically, what is happening uh, the, uh, to the patient, the signs and symptoms. If, uh, let's say, uh, if a clinical trial has been done, if we have drug A and drug B, which drug works better? Why this drug A is working better than the drug B? So like this, we try to understand for the drug A work better in certain group of people, but it did not work better in certain age group. So all these things are done by the epidemiologists along with the other colleagues uh, who are working in this particular field. So as an epidemiologist, we saw some of the activities and roles. What are the competencies? I thought if we have to understand what an epidemiologist have to do, we should first know what are the competencies is required as an epidemiologist. So the competencies required for epidemiologists is first, he should have an analytical skills, the assessment skill. The second one is he should have, or he or she should have a basic public health science knowledge. We will go into details of all these things, what they are supposed to do in each of, uh, with these each competencies, we will discuss. He should have a very good communication skill. Okay, he or she should have a, uh, understanding of the community, what is community and what is the problem in the community, community dimensions of practice. Okay. Then what are the cultural competencies? The, the individual should have a cultural competencies means he should understand the culture of the community because the epidemiologists have to work with the community, right? So they should understand what is the culture of the community. We cannot just go and uh, do any kind of a research and tell you have to do X and you have to do Y. No, we have to understand the community first and then only go and do any kind of interventions. We should also have, as epidemiologists, financial planning and management skills. Okay. Why this is necessary? Because we do a lot of research, we should uh, do a lot of programs. So we need to know how to manage our finances, how to plan that, and how to manage it. Both we need to have the skill. And next is the leadership skills and systems thinking skills. Okay. And coming to that, the last one is a policy development program. These are all the competencies any public health or uh, the epidemiologist should have.